there are a few places, a very few, whose names have such impact that they need only be spoken to conjure up an instant image. They're international, supranational, and we all know what they mean. Some convey an event, a happening, like Dunkirk or Hiroshima, like Pearl Harbor or Pompeii. Some suggest an era, like Chicago and its gangsters, or the Klondike and its gold. And some mean a way of life, like Hollywood or the Casbah, like the Ritz or the Riviera. And that little palm-covered rock is one of those. That rock suggests a way of life and a way of death. It's a symbol of horror that can still haunt our imaginations. For that is Devil's Island. Few of these men will ever see their homeland again. Convicts banished from France, already a forgotten army of living dead. The first stage of their journey of despair. Transportation to a feverish corner of the French Empire, to Guiana, away across the Atlantic amid the forests of the Amazon. From the Ile de Ré in the Bay of Biscay, they sail for that other and most dreaded of isles, Devil's Island. Prison dregs, the murderers, rapists, the men France wished to forget. They, and some political prisoners like Dreyfus, embarked upon this melancholy journey. The convict ship La Martiniere, built at West Hartlepool, this SS Black Maria transported her wretched convict cargoes in dark holes and in cages upon her deck, 80 or 90 to a cage. It's still hard to reach Devil's Island. In Cayenne, capital of Guiana, French authorities long to live down the baleful memories of their tropical trio off the coast of South America. Ile Royale, Ile Saint-Joseph and Ile du Diable. Isles of salvation when they escaped yellow fever in the 18th century. Isles of desperation after 1852 when Louis Napoleon began to transport convicts, white slaves to colonize this pestilential corner of his empire. Today you must charter some angelic little boat from Kourou on the mainland and, watching for sinister black fins, cross nine miles of brown water. There's little joy in an expedition to the mournful isles of 70,000 spirits who, whatever their crimes, could hardly have deserved their fate. Convicts were last shipped here in 1938 and by merciful decree of the free French government, the penal colony was finally abandoned after the war. Then there were three and a half thousand prisoners here. Devil's Island was a hundred years old when the last one was repatriated in 1952, less than 20 years ago. Even today, the unforgiving ground doesn't feel right as you move towards memories of misery and an unhappy history. You can sense Devil's Island was not created to rehabilitate men, but to destroy them. There's no official memory of the convicts who died in this sinister place. Nowhere are their names recorded. It's as though they did not exist. Today, in this putrid place of tropical decay, the jungle breaks in to century-old cells from which so many yearn to break out, forcing rusted locks, draping crumbling walls, hiding scars.
<laughs> French Guiana had always been the dry guillotine which killed its convicts as surely as the steel blade. And for almost a century, there had always been several thousand of these convicts here in the colony. Some 80,000 of them arrived here and only 10,000 completed their sentences. Hundreds of Louis Napoleon's transportees did not reach Guiana to serve sentence. During the 85 years in which convicts were shipped across the Atlantic, many escaped into death en route. In this century, conditions grew even worse. A survivor of the last voyage of the Martiniere was a convicted con man who watched his cage mates die, Raymond Ouzel. Uh, many people did. Yes, terrible, terrible condition. How many convicts were there here then? Oh, I think the same in uh, uh, Saint Jean, eight thousand. Eight thousand. Eight thousand. Mm. But the colonel came to come back, and this colonel came to the specialist for kill. When they have passed, it's finished. We'll put it at uh, 800. Forced labor in the quarries, guarded by such specialists for kill. Each convict in the forests was forced to produce his daily stare. 36 cubic feet of logs, like chopping up two telegraph poles. If you don't meet it, uh, you will to prison. Four days, no it. After four days, it's necessary you made a new stair, and the stair you have not finished. Uh, if you made it, four days, no it. Uh, and all is necessary, the man killed. So they died from, yes. from malnutrition, I suppose? Yes. Did many of the convicts go to the guillotine? Yes. Oh, yes. Strangely, improbably, a few old bagnard, old convicts, still live here in Saint Laurent. Abandoned on these equatorial shores by the receding penal colony, they pass their last ramshackle years in this decaying land. Why were you sent here in the first place? What crime had you committed? Comment je dis ça? En français? En français, mon frère. Your brother? Oui. Yeah. Il a tué quelqu'un. Yes. He killed somebody in a bar. Oui. Mm. And uh, moi, je lui avais donné le revolver. You gave him the gun. Yeah. And what was for your... For that, um, gave me travaux forcé perpetuity. Life? Yeah. Life? Oui. I come here for my life. It's too hard, that man. So you came here in what year? In... Uh, uh, 21. 1921. Oui. What was it like then? Very bad condition. Plenty work. Uh, uh, the the guard is very bad. Orders. Yes, uh, very bad. Um, kill some men for nothing. A convoy of 800 convicts set out from Saint Laurent for the jungle every three months. But the work camp did not overflow, for in those few weeks, he says, the same number would die. 800? Yeah. All the time, every convoy, one convoy coming, one convoy dead. One convoy coming, one convoy dead. Uh, in the camp, and not stop more of three toys. Every man is dead. Mm. Yeah. But many prisoners would kill each other, I believe. Ah, yeah, some, yeah, a few got discussions. Arguments. Uh, yeah. Every night you come down to the camp and fighting, and one kill another man, one kill another man. Now you escaped in 1927. Yeah. How did you escape? Uh, with a little boat. I take a little boat. I take the boat from the uh, French commandant. <laughs> I take the boat and I, go, I run away with that. And uh, I go down to Georgetown. The Englishman, uh, I speak a, a little bit better English. I tell him uh, I come from the French Guinea. Well, I give him eight, some, give some drink and give some uh, cigarettes and give me two. Uh, 
and send me two black men to, uh, to uh, porte car canoe. To carry your canoe. Yeah. He went to, to Venezuela? Yeah. Yes. Uh, six uh, years. Then how did you come back to yeah. prison again? Yeah. How? Ah, and 33. What happened? Uh, one year reclusion. And gave me one year reclusion. That's solitary? Uh, Saint Joseph. One year in solitary? Yeah. That's because the, the people of Venezuela sent you back? They, they no, the General Gomez. Oh. Yeah. He sent everybody. Yes. Yeah. So you got a year in solitary on the island of St. Joseph. In St. Joseph? Yes. Ah, so oh, that's very bad. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's very bad. Why? Uh, you got a uh, little bit to eat. You, uh, you stop all of them in a little... Little cell? Well, yeah, a little cell. And you got nothing. You got not a book. Uh, pour, uh, pour lire. No. You got nothing, nothing, Ju just water and bread. One year. You not uh, talk to the other boys, nothing. You had to be silent all the time. Yeah, all the time. Ah, uh, c'est pas humanitaire. It's not humane. No, c'est pas humanitaire. Ça. Une nation ne doit pas punir les hommes comme ça. Man's inhumanity to man reached its depths in underground cells where daylight dropped through roof grills, where solitary convicts were buried alive for years. In these bear pits, they were not permitted to speak. Chinese discovered water torture, the French discovered silence. Convicts died by the thousands, by fever and torture and despair. They died of malnutrition, of murder, of leprosy, or just because they had lost the spirit to go on living in a place like this. In these verminous cells, they lived and they fought and they died like animals. They would kill each other for the contents of their charges, these small metal tubes containing money which each would keep concealed from the warders, up inside his anus. They killed each other for a shirt, for a few centimes, for anger, for fun. To escape from such torment, they tried to hang themselves. They faked leprosy by cutting off a few fingers or half an ear. They slashed their legs and made the wound turn septic by rubbing into it excretia. They stuck pins into their eyeballs. Brutalized, they endured perhaps the most cruel and primitive condition since the slave galleys, cast away to die in a mouldering land 5,000 miles from home. And at the very end of their mournful road, the death cells. But among the desolation of past punishment, piety. A corrugated iron church built by convicts, its desecrated murals painted by a notorious forger. In the crucifixion scenes, he's added a shaven-headed banyard in his red and white prison stripes. The hammers used to break stone, the whips and pincers of torture. The offertory box remains, though the convict congregation had little enough to give. Devil's Island, because of its awesome name and prisoners like Dreyfus, has always represented this penal colony to the world. In fact, that smallest island was reserved for gentlemanly detainees, the spies, the traitors. Most convict criminals remained on the mainland, in this forbidding cell block city, now occupied by squatters, and visited today by a man who reached the colony in 1928, Louis Dron. Yes, sir. Oh, well, wait, wait a minute. Now there's a convict now. I came down here. Uh, I came down here as a... Uh, trying my luck with some of my friends. Prospecting. Prospecting, correct. But now, you, I believe, had some convicts working for you. So, oh, yes, quite a lot. Once you were inside, the government would take care of you. While you were outside, you had to make a living of your own. 
A lot of people now are developing tremendous sympathy for the convicts and, and there's a sort of a, a world sympathy because there's world accusation of the system. Are you more sorry for the convicts or do you defend the system which brought them here? Uh, you are asking a very hard question, but still to me, some of them, you understand, were not what the skin they were in. I think the, the, the community, I mean by community, I mean the, the, the world would have been better off not to have kept those people alive. A criminal to bragging of how many people they have killed. Now, like the law is blind, you know yourself, <laughs> the, there is mistake made. Uh, some people who really should have been out, but believe you me, some of them, they were hardcore. They were not all Frenchmen, no. remember that. Only one every four. All the rest were Spanish, Italian, uh, Czechoslovak, only God knows. When you came here, Mr. Dron, uh, in, in 28, were you, were, were you sorry for the, the convicts you saw here, the convicts who worked for you, or do you think they were getting their just desserts? All I felt that the, the government such as France or England or any country who send men, they must have sent them for something. Because you don't really, justice may be blind, but not that blind they can go and send people. The time is not like Russia where you send somebody for political, maybe. Dreyfus? There is exception to Dreyfus? everything. Dreyfus? You believe? Well, I'd rather not to bring the subject because it's very a subject who is very sensitive to me. Believe you me. So I'd rather not mention any go because... Well, I'd rather because I don't want to talk. The refuse. <laughs> but in, a, in all fairness, most of the case, there were some really... They were not one the skin, just like one, his name was Bono, who had the, the, the guts to tell me he killed 17 people. Well, what do you think? Apart from simple starvation, there were many punishments for infringements, real or imagined. Convicts would be flogged and left tied to a tree until their backs were live with maggots and insects. Or else they could be buried in the jungle floor up to their necks and left to the sun and the ants. A few desperate men escaped on floating coconut husks, braving the sharks. One convict killed four others, roped their bodies together, and paddled to freedom upon that gruesome raft. Perhaps the most famous ex-convict today is a man called Henri Charrier, known as Papillon, who's written a bestseller of that name about his experiences here. <laughs> Papillon, that is bluff. Is it? Yes, a bluff, Papillon. Papillon is a... Papillon has made this book, he's not himself, he has made this book. Because Papillon is a stupid man. Yes. He is a faker. Really? It's a very exciting book. Ah, <laughs> every story you read is exciting. But it didn't happen to him, you think? No, sir. He went on to tell you the story of maybe 10 or 15 people. Every convict is a joke down here. Well... Look, I didn't come to discuss Papillon, but I'm going to tell you, as far as I'm concerned, Papillon is a fake. That's all. There's one event, though, that certainly happened to him, and that is the killing of a friend of his in an argument with another convict in their cell block here. And as usual, the body of the dead man was brought down here to be thrown to the sharks, for there was no land to spare for the burial of convicts here. The warders had their cemetery over there on the Ile Saint-Joseph, but convicts were for the sharks. They brought the body in a small boat in a canvas shroud and Charrier went with the warders to consign it to the water. As they got here, they discovered that the tolling of the church bell had attracted 50, 80, 100 sharks, as it always did. They threw the body over the side and by some sinister quirk, as the sharks tore at it, it seemed that the, the, the shroud was removed and the man seemed to stand upon the water and was rushed towards their boat walking upon the water then the sharks dragged the body beneath the waves and 
tore it to pieces. In one of his escapes, Papillon reached Trinidad to be helped, as were two or three hundred fugitives in the early 30s, by Walter Bowen, a gentle and charitable magistrate. My view of the matter was that French Guiana's penal system should be should have been abolished and should never and and should never have been allowed to shall I say last until almost the middle of the 20th century and the time was ripe when people who uh, were condemned there and living under the awful condition the horrible conditions which were reported to us and escaping deserves a certain amount of charitable assistance. Since tolerant Trinidad allowed escapers a short sanctuary, he became a criminal's confessor. Very few of them admitted that they had been rightly convicted. There's always some slant, um, which they said had not been properly put to the French jury or to the French court, or that the lawyer, the French lawyer had not, um, had not pressed that point and he should have, which he should have, or some woman had given evidence against them in favor of some other man. I never went into the, into the individual questions of right and wrong. If they got here, they were all right. If they, as far as I am, was concerned, if they got here and they came to us seeking help, we would do our best at least to send them on their way. How did the French government feel about you? I can't imagine you well, were very popular. No, I, we had a visit here from a, an officer from the Surete in Paris who was, to say the least of it, he, he didn't mince his words. I eventually succeeded in, in calming his fears that we, we were running any deliberate, uh, shall I say, uh, underground uh, system between the French criminals in Guyana and here, French Guyana and here. And I was in no way connected, completely in no way, connected with anybody in French Guiana. Apart from the chalking on the cell Except wall. Except that I heard that my name had been <laughs> written up on many walls in Ile de Saint Laurent and Ile du Ré and Ile de Saint Joseph. You were given a recommended rating, I'm sure. I, I, I so I understand. <laughs> if escaped convicts from the islands ever reached this mainland, or if their brother convicts escaped from the coastal camps, there were new horrors to be faced. Apart from the giant alligators in these rivers and the jungle swamps, there were the tribes of cannibal Indians who were paid 100 francs for every escaped convict's head they brought in, with no questions asked about what happened to the rest of him. Those who were real convicts, well then uh, they don't have much chance. Either they go by the the jungle on the jungle is, uh, you don't make it. Unless you have food, unless you kill, unless the way they were doing, we were passing where they had passed, it was thinking of the people they had killed because the pe as you go, they got to have food. How are they going to get food when they see blue, uh, white on the red, white on the red? So the natives are shooting. He told the convict, told me, he says, uh, oh, it is another story. So they told me we are to kill and not to be killed. So uh, we need food. We have to kill them to get it. Only say, what are you going to do? Try to, say, try to escape by the, by the jungle. Try to reach Amazon, but they couldn't. Usually you don't. Saint Laurent was a, a city of bars, really, isn't That's it? correct. Every, at every window, at every door, there are bars. Everything was the convict a penitentiary. As you can see, there is no sign of anything else but uh, residents of this, residents of uh, whatever you want to call it, but that was convict. And now these are the condemned cells behind you. Uh, those were the, absolutely the last, the last chance that you may have, but they were there, right on, that's it. And on what you see right there, that's where the guillotine used to be, right in the center. Not even a guillotine can resist the jungle. Nature soon overcomes what man has made, even this mildewed and malevolent memorial. In 1960, the French finance ministry put the three Isles of Salvation up for sale. 
Along with Devil's Island, any enterprising buyer could have snapped up a hospital, admittedly, with most of its windows barred, a governor's residence, a church, more than 40 cell blocks. He would also have inherited some 70,000 wretched ghosts. There were no takers. More than a quarter of a century after the end of its sentence, Devil's Island still casts its mournful shadow. Unwanted, these days unknown, but never to be forgotten.